Scott Brown here. In today's exciting episode, we are going to discuss chisels. So let's take a look at them, eh? Alright, so what we have here is the Two Cherries Hornbeam Handle Set. You see it's got like a steel ring at the top. It's a wooden handle. This is the 20 mil and the 26, 12, 16, 10, and finally the 6 mil. Now the other thing that is in my set is this sucker here. The Kanari Nomi Pairing Chisel from Fujikawa in Japan. This thing is a beauty. Basically it's a pairing chisel used not with a mallet, it's used with just the force of your hand to just slice those last uneven layers of a checkout or a, uh, you know, if you're doing a checkout for a hinge or if you're doing like a mortise and tenon, this is just to shave those last little bits and get it mint. They come in different sizes as well, but this is the only size I have and I really like it. It's got the hoop on the back there. And so the sides are the only part that you need to flatten when you put it on the stones. Now obviously you've got to get your chisels in to where you want it to go using something and I use the Two Cherries Carver's Mallet. When you're carving something you change angles all the time so I like it just because I don't have to look at the chisel when I'm hitting it. I can just focus on what I'm chiseling. But it's awfully big. It's quite a big thing to use especially when you're in and around door locks and you know, little tight areas. So for that, oh, this has turned into a two cherries extravaganza. For that, I use this is a heavy little mallet. The mallet does all the work, if you know what I mean. You just have to go like that. The downside is that it tends to wear the timber on your chisel a little bit quicker. Okay, so that's my basic chisel set. A lot of people have asked me about is how I sharpen these chisels. So there's two stones that I have. I have the Norton, the Norton India oil stone here. This is the one I've had the longest. And it's okay, it's not bad. It just uh, it requires a bit of uh, oil in order to work. Oh, smells like a mechanic's garage. But I've since moved on to a wet stone. And I basically copy the samurai carpenter. <laughs> he, um, he's got wet stones like this and he's got about half a dozen of them. And he's got he's built a pond and you know he's got a drip pipe and everything and I mean a lot of you guys would have seen this video so you'll know what I'm talking about but uh, I've only got the one whetstone so far and it's the 500 do you call it grit is it like sandpaper with a bit of water and patience this is a great stone to use to sharpen these two cherries chisels this is how I've been sharpening things for a while just by hand on this whetstone. I'll put a little link to the Summer Carpenters video on sharpening because you're going to get a lot more from that than you will from this. So I basically just start with the back and I work on getting it flat. Sometimes I do a figure of eight so I don't put a gouge in the whetstone. So this is the hard part, getting this bevel consistent. I recently added to my sharpening collection after an event I went to on Thursday last week. It was a tool demo uh, from Veritas Tools. They make amazing planers and spoke shaves and a guy named Vic Teslin from Canada was here in New Zealand to do some demos and I think he's touring around Australia as well. He showed us a bunch of things. He showed us the low angle jack plane and why it's so good and how many different angles the blade can be set in order to plane and smooth different things. He also showed us the sharpening guide and um, we all put our names in a hat and basically pulled it out and my name didn't come up. But the guy in front of me, my mate, his name came up and without even looking he just grabbed the prize and handed it over his shoulder to me because he already had it at his workshop at home. And now I have it. The Veritas Honing Guide Mark II Standard. I had a little play with it last week. I'm not really... I'm no expert in using this stuff. Vic Teslin did show us, but I'm a notoriously bad classroom student, so it's gonna take a few more watching of YouTube videos and trial and error for me to get it. 
But what I do know is you basically get a chisel like this or a planer blade and it has different settings up here. It comes with this little gauge as well. This is how you actually set it. But like I said, I need to be more acquainted with it before I show you that. You put it in like this and then you tighten it. Now the whole idea of this honing guide is it keeps the blade in the correct position as you continuously sharpen the beveled angle. And the little wheel at the bottom here helps you roll along and then you just continuously go like that. Oh my god! Because I, I didn't even know this existed until, until I saw it on Thursday. So one thing, one thing that Vic Teslin said last week, which is, which I thought was a good way of looking at it, is it doesn't really matter how you sharpen it or what you sharpen it with. The goal is to get two flat planes to meet at an edge. That needs to be flat, that needs to be flat, and that edge needs to be sharp. That's the goal. Two flat surfaces meeting at an edge. So I also keep the chisels in this Taurus chisel roll. It's a company in New Zealand, they make tool belts as well. It keeps it pretty mint, you know, nice and snug in there, you roll it up. This handle sticks out, but that's okay. And you go like that. The clip broke off, but that's okay too. And you go like that. Wow. And then you unroll it, and you're ready for action.